All right, gang, Math 6610, more on MANOVA, more specifically assumptions. I'll add some, some extra stuff in, um, too, but um, the, primarily the, the reason for this, this video is uh, for assumptions. I can't help but laugh. This video has been a pain in the royal butt. Uh, this is the third time I've tried putting it up, and um, let me just tell you some things. So you can uh, prepare for it and not run into kind of the same things that I've run into. There are a couple of packages that you're going to need to install here. Um, and one of those is BioTools and uh, MVN. Now the MVN is for the multivariate normality test that we use. And the BioTools is for boxes M. Uh, which uh, tests the quality of the variance covariance matrices, matrices uh, across our groups, which in this example will be professors. So, guys, uh, you know, keep in mind that to install a package, for example, if we're going to install BioTools, uh, we um, have to do install packages bio tools and uh, then once we've done that you know obviously if we're on the same um, computer then we just have to access the library now this this uh, i'm pretty sure I, I, I found the inconsistencies in this but this has to be done uh, one time and then when you access that from there on out all you have to do is access the library now the reason I'm telling you this is I want you to stop before you jump too far ahead in this video and go ahead and install these two packages. Install BioTools and install MVM. The reason being is, and this has been a source of uh, frustration for this video for me, is I have a, um, a MacBook Air and uh, I also have an iMac and uh, I also have a, um, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, but anyway, when I installed BioTools, um, I forget what it was I had to uh, install. It was like, um, uh, well, anyway, it, there's going to be a, a software package that you have to install to get BioTools to run. And it's, uh, it's quite lengthy to do that. Um, so, um, you know, I'm going to just encourage you to go ahead and install those before you uh, watch the rest of this video. So that's going to save you some headaches, uh, hopefully. Well, gang, what I've uh, hoped that we know up to now is that we can use uh, the general linear model procedures. And um, get my paper back on track here. And we've seen how we can use these to examine group differences uh, on a single uh, dependent variable. So, and when we do a single dependent variable, Uh, then we should know if we have across, uh, for example, k greater than two cases, uh, we use uh, an ANOVA. Because uh, we may be uh, presented in research where we have situations where we have a single uh, dependent variable. Which breaks nicely into... Uh, two or more components. So, for example, I think I used before that our single dependent variable may be a, a Math 1500 final exam score, and we may break that down into descriptive statistics, uh, correlation regression, uh, normal distributions, and possibly uh, inference. So, if we have a situation where a single dependent variable is naturally uh, divided into uh, uh, subsets, if you will, then uh, MANOVA is the tool for you. Now, uh, thinking back, uh, uh, for example, uh, let's say we have this single dependent variable and we would like to examine this over, uh, we'd like to see if there's any differences across instructors A, B, and C. Well, obviously, uh, in in the um, uh, the uh, 
you know, going back to uh, the the motivation for ANOVA, uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, the motivation for ANOVA was we don't want to conduct uh, multiple t-tests because we inflate the family-wise type 1 error rate. Well, the same thing goes here. If we wanted to examine the difference of instructors A, B, and C just for descriptive statistics and then separately for correlation regression, separately for normal distributions, and sep separately for inference, then when we, we would be conducting multiple ANOVAs. Well, we're going to get a natural inflation of the type 1 error rate because we're conducting multiple tests on the same data. So I guess at the end of the day, um, we control that uh, by conducting a MANOVA. Um, now, um, MANOVA, I think I said in a previous video, uh, MANOVA can detect uh, individual, uh, or let's say more specific effects. And uh, that's uh, easy to generalize from this uh, that we get more power. Well, more power statistically <clears throat> means that if the null is uh, false, then we have a higher probability of rejecting it. More power, generally speaking, uh, is, is taken in, obviously in a different context. Now, let's talk about statistical power. Uh, a lot of uh, variation in the research. So when you look at the uh, uh, MANOVA and power, indicating statistical power in here, what I can tell you is the research is very confusing. Uh, first of all, uh, I looked this up. Uh, one person found that uh, as the correlation between the dependent variables increases, your power actually decreases. So if we have this one dependent variable that we break into subsets, generally speaking, if these things are highly correlated, then uh, one person found that we uh, uh, lose power. And that's kind of con uh, concerning because, for the most part, you don't want to use MANOVA if your dependent variables aren't highly correlated, or at least moderately correlated. So that seemed to uh, present uh, a problem for the use of MANOVA. Uh, shortly after, others, and I believe it was Tavish, Nick, and Fidel, found that, uh, that more specifically, that when you had a strong negative correlation or a positive or negative moderately correlated dependent variables, then MANOVA is recommended. It seemed to be only when you had a positive correlation between the two that there seemed to be some concern with the loss of power. As long as this was a negative correlation between the two or you had a positively or negatively moderately correlation, moderate correlation, then all is good. Well, uh, regardless, one thing that the research has shown is when the dependent variables, as I mentioned earlier, are uncorrelated, the MANOVA uh, design is uh, a waste of time. Follow Stevens. Stevens, uh, University of Cincinnati guy. I've actually taken a class under one of his students, his past students. Now, he found just the opposite. He found when there's high correlations between the dependent variables, uh, that MANOVA leads to higher power. Now, I only tell you this uh, not to confuse you, not to, for you to throw the baby out the bathwater here and forget MANOVA as uh, an option when you go to your statistical, or when you go to your, uh, to, to your uh, uh, master's thesis, if you're going to complete the program with us, not just get your 18 hours. Uh, that uh, uh, the, the research is... Um, is is uh, quite confusing when it comes to uh, power and the correlation between uh, dependent variables. Now, guys, one thing I will tell you, at least in my opinion, uh, there's one rule that I want you to put on your radar, uh, and that would be when uh, conducting a MANOVA, Uh, 
uh, don't lump a bunch of variables together. And what I mean is, you know, y1, y2, a bunch of dependent variables together. Uh, so don't lump a bunch of uh, variables, dependent variables together for the sake of running. a uh, MANOVA design. In fact, the only conditions that I like to um, uh, run a MANOVA is uh, if you have a Y variable that naturally leads into uh, to certain chunks, or if there is a theoretical foundation uh, for the reason you want to uh, uh, conduct a MANOVA. So don't just go into this blind side and just start bunching a bunch of, start putting a bunch of stuff together just because MANOVAs are pretty cool. Uh, and I think they are. I think there's, I don't know why, but I've always uh, kind of enjoyed uh, studying MANOVA. All right, gang, let's, uh, let's get to the, um, the sort of general steps, general procedures. And I've, I've covered this in a previous video, but uh, I realize the nature of students as they watch videos. Uh, some of you skip around, some of you are very loyal, and you watch every single video and take notes, which is really cool, but, uh, I mean, you, know, you know, it is what it is. So, so guys, the first thing uh, I want you to do uh, is to cleanse your data. Make sure you've got your data from Excel or whatever it may be uh, in the format that you need to... Um, um, uh, to, to run your analysis. Uh, the biggest mistake, the most, uh, the most crucial mistake uh, in, in the last time I taught this class was this step right here, the easiest step. Uh, for example, uh, remember, um, no, let's get rid of this right here. Remember when we um, put uh, a data set into R, uh, we, for the, for the most part, uh, need subjects, and we need the subject data presented across variable 1, variable 2, and so on and so forth. Uh, what I had some students do is they threw this out, and they put the variables on the horizontals and then try to run uh, analysis the way I've taught them in class. And guys, that just will not work. Okay, so that's going to be, uh, if, if you do something like that on your final project uh, and you're, we don't catch it before your presentation, it's, um, it's not going to be good. Uh, second thing you'd want to do is run your descriptives. And I'll briefly show you um, what I'll talk about there. But for the most part, uh, in, in the context of this video, uh, what I want to do um, here is to uh, show you how we can uh, look at the descriptives to run multivariate normality. And then I'd like to look at uh, the variance, covariance matrix actually matrices across uh, uh, treatment levels. And I'll not only show you how to examine that descriptively, but I'll also show you how to conduct a test of statistics, uh, significance called BOX's uh, M-test, okay? Uh, next thing you'd want to do is set your contrast. Hopefully, uh, from the week before, I've kind of uh, impressed upon you. The contrasts are kind of cool uh, because they give you more uh, kind of experimental control over your, uh, over your, uh, over your research. Uh, fourth thing you're going to do is, you know, this is the fun part. <laughs> well, sort of. Uh, run the MANOVA and, uh, and, you know, see what we get. The fifth thing is uh, run univariate. Novas. And the final thing, and this is what I'm going to get into um, sometime next week, 
this is probably going to, I'm going to put up a video probably on Monday or Tuesday of uh, the week of Thanksgiving. Uh, then I'm going to leave you alone uh, because you will have just, uh, I think you turn in your uh, next assignment uh, next week, and I know you're going to be busy with that. So I'll probably uh, put up uh, uh, the video on what we call discriminant function analysis. Which I also think is really cool stuff. So, uh, you, you know, you're not going to be an expert on discriminant function analysis by the end of the uh, video, but uh, it'll give you an introduction uh, uh, to that. So, guys, hopefully you got a, uh, a pretty good understanding of, uh, of what's happening here. So uh, let's, um, let's, let's get out of here and, 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 and go look at some stuff, okay? Now, what I have... Um, at my disposal, and I've already uploaded it to, to Blackboard. Uh, I should have already had this done. My bad, guys. Uh, is I have a... Uh, all right, I have a data set uh, on Blackboard called Instruction. And just to let you uh, see what we got here... Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a bigger, broader data set for uh, future things to come. Because I ultimately want to give you a demonstration on two-way MANOVA and a MANCOVA design. But for the most part, what I want to look at here is I want to consider that a final exam could be broken into two components. A descriptive statistic measure and an inference measure. All right? And it looks like these scores are presented in terms of some, uh, some normal... Uh, or standardized score. Um, these are not out of 100, I don't think. And I, I got to tell you, uh, I have manipulated this data set uh, to, to accomplish a certain goal. Uh, sometimes, you know, you, it, it, it's, it's so dangerous sometimes when you step back and try to examine the work that other people are doing. For example, if you examine what I did this week and you look just in terms of productivity that's, uh, that's examinable, you might think, well, I didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. Well, guys, I have to tell you, I spent uh, right at two hours trying to find a data set and manipulating it to where one thing would come out statistically significant, two other things wouldn't, and then something else would. Keeping in mind here that I want this data set to not only represent a MANOVA illustration, but a MANCOVA and a two-way MANOVA. Now, it took me two hours to manipulate the data, go in and change a number here or a number there to, uh, to, to create something that uh, I wanted for my illustration. So uh, it takes a while to do that because when you change one thing, something else changes. So anyway, uh, you know, this is what we've got. And really... What I want to do here is I'm just interested in descriptive statistics, inference, and professor. I've included the IQ here so we can do a MANCOVA, if I include IQ as a, as a covariate. And I've included group, whether it's an evening or a day class, uh, just so... Uh, okay, guys, i got to stop here for a second my, uh, and hook up. Uh, my, my computer's dying on me, so, so hang tight. Okay, I'm back. I uh, had a, something flash up on the screen. I don't know if you can see this or not, but uh, it says low battery, like 5% remaining, and that would not have been cool uh, if I had uh, had to restart this video just because of something like that. Uh, so guys, uh, uh, again, 
In this demonstration, in this video, I just want to look at descriptives, inferences, my two dependent variables, and my, uh, my, my uh, factor here would be uh, professors, okay? So ultimately, I want to see uh, if there's a difference in the means of descriptive statistic and inference across professors, and then we can actually break those down into separate univariate um, ANOVAs and, uh, and, and get a little bit more information there. All right, so uh, first step is cleanse the data, right? Uh, that's done. I've got uh, my subjects. Granted, they're out of whack here. One, two, three. That, that's not a problem, I don't think. Uh, I have my variables on the vertical and my subjects on the horizontal. Uh, the next thing I want to do is run some basic descriptive statistics. So, uh, you know, the first thing I like to do is look at pictures. And um, I'd like to take a look at this, which are side-by-side -side box plots. What am I looking at here? Guys, as basic as we can uh, talk about it, center and spread. Uh, compare the medians and compare the, the spreads of the distribution. Uh, the median score for A, uh, instructor A is clearly higher than B, and so on and so forth. Uh, I'd also want to run this for um, uh, over inference. And uh, same kind of stuff. Next thing I'd want to do is look at, uh, at descriptive statistics. So I don't, I'm not going to do this much, but... Uh, uh, again, just as a um, reminder, T apply if I want to look at descriptive statistics over professor. And let's say I want to examine the mean. Then we can see that the mean score uh, for professor A compared to professor B compared to professor C uh, may be different. Now, you know, if you don't have a lot of statistical background, and I give people a hard time, but uh, I shouldn't because uh, those people know a lot more than me and a lot of other stuff. Uh, but it's so easy if, if you're really looking at this and you're wanting to see if there's a difference in the final exam score, uh, it, it's, it's so tempting to just come down here to Professor A and say, man, Professor A is just doing it right. But you never know. Maybe Professor A just happened to luck up and get higher level students. So maybe this 95.83 being much more uh, or much higher than 82.67, maybe it's not as much... Uh, about the professor as it, as it is the level of students that Professor A actually ended up getting in his or her class. So that were, that's where a Mankova design will come in, and that's something that we'll uh, look at in a later video. So um, uh, something else you may want to look at, I would like to take a look at uh, histogram, just in terms of not multivariate normality, but just in terms of uh, normality. And uh, that's, that's just, uh, just uh, music to the ears right there. That uh, looks like it came from a normal distribution to me. And uh, inference, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, sure, certainly, um, I don't think there's enough evidence there to reject that coming from a normal distribution, but it's not as, uh, as nice a distribution as we had before. Well, guys, anyway, what we'd want to do now is we'd want to carry out some, uh, some tests for multivariate normality. What multivariate normality will allow us to do is it will allow us to take the, uh, the, the values across the professor. So we kind of look at descriptive statistic distribution across A, uh, descriptives across B, descriptives across C, inference across A, inference across B, inference across C. So we kind of look at six different distributions, and we want to see that all of those give evidence, uh, or I should say don't provide evidence where we reject uh, the assumption of the data coming from a normal distribution. Uh, guys, the easiest way to do this is to uh, load a library for MVN. Now, I can do this because uh, I've already installed the package. If you haven't installed the package, then you're going to have to install dot .packages, uh, quote, MVM, uh, end quote. But I've already done that, so all I have to do is access the library. Now, uh, a couple of pretty cool uh, tests here. Uh, one of them is called Martia test. And uh, what Martia test uh, 
will do is it'll conduct uh, on uh, the data set that we give it. Now, something new here. What I want to do is I want to throw out everything in my data set, that data set except for descriptive statistics, inference, and professor. So what I'm, no, I'm sorry. I want to throw it out. Um, I just look at the look at the quantitative variables. So a way that I can do that is I can use what's called data. In this format, now I got two things I've got to put in. First of all, I've got to tell Marty a test uh, what uh, cases I want to use. Well, I want to use them all. The next thing I've got to do is tell uh, this command, what variables do I want to use? Well, R sees this as variable 1, variable 2, variable 3, variable 4, and so on and so forth. So the next command I've got to give this is I've got to tell, I want to use variables 2 and 3. Okay? Now, if I hit, uh, well, let's close this up. If I hit Enter... Uh, I'm going to get Martia's multivariate normality test. And uh, it's kind of cool. No, you, no interpretation of p-values. It's just uh, straightforward. At the end, it gives you a result. And let me tell you a little bit more how the way this breaks down. G1p uh, is uh, a measurement of skewness. And our p-value, the, the, the null hypothesis here would be that the, uh, the, the data are... Uh, are, are not skewed, and uh, the alternative would be the data are skewed. Uh, the p-value is greater than 0.05, so we would fail to reject the null, concluding that the, the, the data uh, are, are not skewed. Guys, skewness is really easy to visualize. Skewness is just about symmetry. Are the data symmetric? G2p, on the other hand, is a little bit more complicated, and it's much, much, much more difficult to visualize. This is called kurtosis. Uh, you can think about kurtosis as kind of the pointiness uh, of the central peak. Uh, assuming we have skewness, uh, I'm sorry, assuming we have symmetry, uh, if we have uh, a central peak that's high and sharp, or if we have a central peak that's like short and broad, we may still have the symmetry property, but we violate the kurtosis property. So uh, uh, in this situation, our p-value is, is greater than 0.05, uh, so we can assume that we do not violate uh, kurtosis. So guys, putting all this together, uh, it's running what's called a chi-square small skew, so it's running, uh, because I have such a small data set, it's making a connection, or I'm sorry, connection sheet, it's making a correction, so our result is the data is multivariate normal. Uh, guys, another way of doing this that's kind of cool is uh, Marty a test for our same data, all cases, variables 2 and 3. But what we can do now is we could run a QQ plot. And what this will do, it will give us... Um, oh. All right, what did we do here? There we go. And what this will do is it'll give us the uh, uh, the quantiles. And uh, if uh, the closer these points are to the diagonal, uh, and these deviate somewhat, but uh, guys, I've seen these things come up and go uh, way up, so these don't deviate uh, much. So anyway, the more these things deviate from uh, the diagonal, uh, the, um, uh, the lower the p-value will be. So that's just a visual that you want to include um, if you run a MANOVA in your uh, final research project. Guys, there are other ones. Uh, there's a Royston. And um, And you'll find out that uh, Royston's a little more powerful. P-value's a, uh, a little more aggressive. 
and uh, I think, right? Yeah, that's what. I, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, and uh, but still, it gives us the same uh, same result. Now, this is what people <laughs> do that uh, kind of tricky. Let's say that uh, for some reason they want to find that the data is uh, is uh, doesn't. Uh, we can't assume uh, uh, multivariate normality. Uh, you know, sometimes you get a more aggressive test and uh, you might get what you want. Uh, guys, there's uh, another one. Uh, it requires you to load the package MV norm test. And uh, there's something called M Shapiro. And the only reason I'm uh, showing you this one is uh, we've done Shapiro's test of normality for uh, individual distributions, but the M Shapiro, as you should probably figure out, is the multivariate. Now, what you got to do here, and let me uh, let me go back and get our data back so we can see this before we run it. Uh, what we have to do with the uh, with the M Shapiro is we have to run this across each group of our treatment, and in this situation, our treatment is the professor. So, what I would need to do here. Uh, is I would need to run uh, cases, uh, let's see, one through six. And I would run, want to run that for variables two and three. Uh, okay, why is that not finding M. Shapiro test? Maybe I haven't loaded it on this computer. I don't know. All right, let's try installing the library now. Hmm. <laughs> um, well, guys, I have to tell you, I don't know. Um, let's try this. Let's go. Um, I don't think this is going to work. No, it's not. Um, I'll get back with you on this. It says uh, we need a numeric matrix of data values. So uh, it's a U. Um, let me try this. Uh, let, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. Let's just create a data two and let's do a data frame. And let's do descriptives, uh, inference, and professor. So what I've done here is I just uh, got down to what I want. Uh, so if I do M Shapiro uh, dot uh, test for data two, that's nah, not going to work. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know why I'm hell bent on getting this to work, but it's not going to work, guys. Uh, I don't know. Don't know. Uh, let me look that up and uh, and see if we can uh, if we can get that going. But uh, I'm just really wasting time here because uh, uh, this is the one that I would uh, want you to report. Marty is. Uh, multivariate normality test, and uh, but I got to admit that's going to bug the crap out of me why that uh, why that actually didn't work. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to uh, focus attention now on our next assumption, and the next assum assumption is equal variance covariance matrices across treatment levels. 
And guys, in this uh, situation, our treatment level is across the professor. Now, here's a situation where you're going to have to install the package uh, bio tools. And uh, I've already done that. Um, I'm going to... Ah. Uh, so I'm going to install the library of bio tools. And for some reason, it's going to kick out. So uh, what I want to run here is I want to run... No, I don't. Let me, let me back up a little bit. What I'd like to do here uh, is I would like to um, do uh, uh, T-apply. And I want to, um, let's see how I want to do this. Not really sure how I want to pull this off. <laughs> let's, um, let's do this. Let's go by and let's go uh, our data. And I want to look at all the cases for variables two and three. And I want to do this over professor. And I want to look at the uh, covariance. Because the covariance matrix is going to give me the uh, variance. Yeah, this should work. Okay. All right, perfect. This is exactly what I want. Now, what we've got here um, is, uh, again, let's go back and uh, let's, 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 let's look at what I did here. I just towed, towed uh, this command by that I want to uh, look at the uh, data, all the cases, 1 to 18, but I just want to look at the variables 2 and 3, which are descriptives and inference, and I want to look at that over professor, and I want to create uh, the covariances. Now, uh, so this matrix right here is for professor A, so we could think about that as being treatment level 1, professor B, treatment level 2, and professor C, treatment level 3. Now, if you think about these being a matrix, uh, or these being matrices, uh, this 179.77, where it lines up uh, with descriptive and descriptive, this is actually the variance. Uh, covariance uh, uh, looks at, um, examines how two variables uh, vary uh, from each other. Uh, a special case of variance is, uh, sorry, of covariance is variance. How does uh, a variable vary within itself? Well, the way we uh, measure that is, is called the variance. So uh, if uh, we look at uh, the variance of a descriptive would be 179 just for Professor A, and uh, the variance of inference would be uh, 93.9. Now, guys, we can, uh, I can illustrate this if you'd like, uh, and I think it may be, uh, may be worthwhile. Uh, if we look at the variance of just the numbers uh, 115, uh, 98, 107, 90, 85, uh, and 80. Uh, you can see that the variance of these descriptive statistic measures just for Professor uh, A are 179.77, which is exactly what we get right here. So uh, what we're trying to look at here, we're trying to eyeball, and be careful because these are this is sample data, but we're trying to eyeball if we think from a population perspective if these variance covariance matrices are the same. So I'm just going to compare element for element. I'm going to compare the upper left hand element with the upper left hand element with the upper left hand element. Not a lot of variation there. The lower left hand element with the lower left hand element and the lower one. Yeah, 131 and 108 vary quite a bit. Compare the other parts. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking at the covariance between descript descriptives and inference for Professor A, B, and C. Uh, not a ton of variation. Guys, there's a lot of variation in this component right here. 
the, co uh, the variance between inference for Professor A is right at half the variance for inference of Professor B. Now, is that going to cause a problem? Well, let's let the process play out. And there's something called box M where I can look at my data, all cases, variables two and three. And I want to look at this over professor. And what I do here is this takes the guesswork out of it. And this goes back to what I talked about earlier in the video. Uh, you know, if, uh, if one group has a mean of 82 and another group has a mean of 83, just because the sample means are different doesn't mean the population means were different. We let p-values uh, make those decisions for us. Well, it's the same thing here. I can eyeball these sample variance covariance matrices. But uh, until we to generalize to a population, we've got to look at underlying probability distribution, which this is chi-square. We've got to look at degrees of freedom, and so on and so forth. So guys, uh, the null hypothesis for this test is the uh, uh, homogeneity of covariance matrices uh, assumption is not violated. The alternative is the uh, homogeneity of covariance matrices is violated. So. Uh, we don't have statistical significance, so we can assume uh, 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 multi. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We can assume uh, homogeneity of covariance matrices. So those differences that we examined back here, that 93.9 versus 187.6, that difference wasn't large enough based on the underlying probability distribution that we're using to create an overall p-value that is less than 0.05. Now, gang, I want to come in and run the ANOVA, and let's just do this real quickly because um, uh, just, um, uh, you know, as a, as a review, we've already done this. But um, So you should know by now you're going to bind the stuff together. Again, the process of ANOVA is kind of weird because it doesn't actually compare descriptive statistics with, the, with inference. What it does is it mashes these two things together, creates a linear composite between the two, and it examines how far away from that linear composite that descriptives and inference falls uh, for each of the, uh, the grouping variables. Um, let's run our MANOVA. And so we want to run our Y over our group. And of course now we want to um, uh, run our summary. All right. Now, PLI's Bartlett trace is what we're given as the default. This is our test statistic. Uh, this is the uh, F statistic, our degrees of freedom. Um, so, um, you know, our natural tendency is our, you know, for our eyeballs to go directly to the P value. And uh, so uh, we uh, aren't rejecting the null. So what we can conclude here is that the learning components, uh, uh, or at least learning across components of the final exam, uh, doesn't appear to be statistically significant uh, across a professor. Now, what we'd want to do now is examine things a little closer. And uh, we're going to uh, do this with a summary AOV. So this is going to run our univariate models. And uh, let's uh, not throw caution to the wind here, okay? Uh, <laughs> when we first look at this, we think, oh, man, we got statistical significance. Ah, really, I don't think we do. Uh, well, let me explain that. We're running multiple tests here. And when we run multiple tests on the same same data, uh, you, I mean, again, you should know by now that the type 1 error rate is going to be, uh, uh, is going to be inflated. It's kind of like this. Uh, if, if you've got a probability of something happening, is it more likely for that to happen if you repeat the event one time or repeat it many times? Well, it's more likely to happen if you repeat it many times, even if there's a low probability of something happening. Uh, for example, my wife is a horrible golfer. And uh, I've taken her down to the golf course before, you know, on like a Sunday afternoon when there's not many people out there. 
and tried to teach her how to putt. And she, from 10 foot, she is a horrible putter. She, uh, she's lucky if she can keep it on the green. So if, if I was going to bet a thousand bucks and I'm like, okay, Tanya, you've got one shot of making this 10 footer. I, uh, you know what? She might make it. Not betting she doesn't. But if I give her a hundred attempts at that, you know what? She might get lucky. She might get lucky. She's got a lot better chance of making uh, a putt with a hundred attempts than she does one. Well, that's the same thing here. Uh, we've got a lot uh, better, quote unquote, uh, chance of committing a type one if we commit multiple tests. So what I would do here uh, to uh, to uh, uh, modify for the um, inflated type one error rate, I'd use a Bonferroni uh, adjustment. And at the end of the day, a Bonferroni adjustment says uh, take the number of hypothesis, hypotheses, and uh, divide your alpha, which is usually 0.05, uh, by this. So guys, you can see that uh, if we run two separate ANOVAs here, we're going to have two separate uh, uh, hypotheses. So if I take 0.05 divided by the number of hypotheses, I'm going to get a much better alpha level because of the repeated measures, or not repeated measures like repeated measures, but repeated testing on the same data at 0.025. So I think I'm testing at 0.05, but because I'm doing repeated testing, I'm really probably testing at 0.025. Okay, so that's a good correction. Uh, so you can see that the p-value is not below 0.025. The, uh, the corrected Bonferroni uh, or the Bonferroni adjustment. So at the end of the day, even though it looks like I have a, well, I do have a p-value less than 0.05, in my opinion, I don't have statistical significance uh, in either of these. Um, we can uh, we can go on and uh, you know take a look at uh, at uh, some contrast. Um, contrast aren't officially uh, you know, part of the, the MANOVA model, but um, uh, I don't, yeah, I'll tell you what, let's just go ahead and, and, and go through it. I'm not really prepared to talk about this, but if I were running a, um, uh, it, it, I guess probably the best way to run this would just be to use the default. And that's uh, contrast, use the cont.treatment uh, command. Uh, first thing I would put in is the number of levels in my treatment. So I have three professors, so I would put in three. And the next thing I would do is put in the base. And it seems like uh, there's something going on with this. Uh, hold on, yeah. With this, uh, well, actually, I don't need to do that. Uh, I can just put one. It'll take the first, uh, the first professor that I get, and it'll use that as the base when I use uh, this. Okay. So uh, I set up a contrast using uh, kind of the, um, <laughs> I don't know, the weak approach, if you will, uh, and. Uh, I could go ahead and I tell you what. Let's uh, let's let's go ahead and uh, and, uh, and wrap this up. So, uh, guys, uh, if I were going to do contrast, I would uh, um, well, I don't know. <laughs> Trying to kind of think this through. What would I actually want to do here? Um, Probably should have been prepared, shouldn't I? Um, Dad Um I tell you what, let's do. Let's let's just uh, as illustration, let's run these contrasts um, uh, separately on our models. Again, uh, contrasts don't really apply for the MANOVA 
uh, but they do for the individual ANOVAs. So uh, let's create a descriptive model. So this is for the descriptive st statistics. So we can run a linear model on the descriptives uh, over the uh, group, which is professor. And then I can do my inference model. And uh, then what I can do is I can, you know, I showed, showed you all this uh, back um, in the contrast. Uh, I can do a summary uh, .lm of my D model. And I can run my contrast, what did I call this? Uh, contrast 1. And, uh, you know, it, it's kind of cool. Uh, gives me uh, multiple comparisons, but it, uh, it controls for stuff. So uh, just as I've set it up, it gives me an uh, opportunity to, uh, to, to more formally test Professor A, I'm, I'm sorry, Professor uh, B and C with, with Professor A. So uh, for the descriptive statistics, it doesn't appear to me that there's uh, uh, any statistically significant difference in, in the scores. Um, something else I would uh, definitely want to do, I'd want to run it uh, also on my I model. And I'll run it over my contrast one. And, uh, you know, there appears to be a statistically significant difference in the means for inference across Professor A and Professor C. Now, uh, if you buy into this, and, and there's, statistically st there's, there's definitely statistical significance to support this, uh, it looks like uh, Professor a could, I'm sorry, sorry, Professor C could, uh, could, could, could use some uh, instruction from Professor A because it looks like what Professor A is doing in terms of instruction for inference is working a lot better for, than Professor C. Now again, guys, we'll, 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 we'll tighten up this model a lot when we pull in a covariate because it may be just that Professor A ended up with better students than Professor C. Maybe Professor C I ended up with a, a bunch of students who, you know, didn't come to class, don't do their assignments, just not into statistics. So, and, uh, you know, if you've been teaching very long, we've all had those classes that drive us crazy. Um, well, guys, that's it. Uh, I'm going to end this. Uh, I hope it's been worthwhile. I know definitely that the, um, the assumption part has some.